Okay, we'll go ahead and, and uh, kick things off. We kind of have a lot going on tonight. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the uh, Monday Night Guest Speaker Series. Um, I'm David York. Uh, I am the Tech Employer Coordinator for uh, Eastern Kentucky and Central Kentucky. Um, so thanks for showing up. I'm pretty excited for tonight's speaker. It's going to be pretty interesting uh, going over chat GPT, um, prompt engineering, and some of the capabilities there. So that's going to be pretty, pretty sweet. Um, I do have a couple things to remind you guys of uh, before we begin, um, and that is we do have other guest speakers coming up um, next week. We have Matt Overwine um, doing digital product design. Should be pretty interesting. Um, a couple weeks after that, so that would be um, October the 9th, we have Joe Mendel um, also doing something um, on ChatGPT or AI that is subject to change. He hasn't fully confirmed that yet, uh, but that's that's our best guess. Um, we will have others coming up after that, um, and so stay tuned for more information regarding that, especially in announcements. Um, speaking of announcements, uh, our careers team, the people I work with, we um, are always working on new events, uh, scheduling um, new speakers, um, and trying to do more hiring fairs and things of that nature. The best way to stay up to date on that stuff is not only the announcements channel, but the Tech Career Newsletter. Um, it's a really good way to stay up to date. Um, we also, if you are currently job seeking, we have a lot of really good hot leads on the job search stuff that uh, fit our participants, you guys, um, quite nicely. So make sure to sign up for that. Um, other than that, um, just make sure to keep yourself muted. Um, at the end, there will be a QA. and um, you can definitely ask uh, questions in the chat. Um, and at the very end, uh, whenever we do Q&A, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions to Troy. Um, so speaking of Troy, um, we are joined by Troy Kelly. Um, he is a founder um, at eGeneering, um, a company out of Indianapolis. Uh, they, they are a consulting firm, and he's going to do a bit of um, demonstration as to the capabilities of ChatGPT um, and AI language models. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to Troy. Thanks, David. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you inviting me. And um, I uh, I was talking to uh, David earlier, and I do have some, although I live here in Indiana, I, I have some connections. I have family that lives in Louisville and Jeffersonville and um, get down there a bit. Uh, really, um, Louisville is a great city. Um, been to Thunder several times and, uh, um, really like it. When I was talking to the, um, uh, the Code Kentucky folks, um, I was really impressed with the program and I love sharing what I know. And so, um, when, uh, when they asked if I had something to share, I immediately thought of this because. Um, I've been a developer for the last 30 years, and um, this technology is pretty awesome. It can really help um, uh, help us as developers improve our skills, help us um, uh, get work done faster or, or cheaper. Um, but there's also some things to know about it that um, that can you know, to be aware of things that can, uh, you know, get you in a little bit of trouble or um, produce results that um, uh, that are not the best. So, um, with that, the topic really here is Chat GPT. If you're not familiar with that, um, Chat Chat GPT is what's called a large language model, and uh, it would be an entirely separate talk to um, talk about how all that works. Um, one of the things that you can do if you uh, decide to kind of experiment is 
you can ask ChatGPT to explain it to you, and it'll do a pretty good job. Um, so you can use it for free, um, but uh, you do have to sign up. And if you just go to chat chat.openai.com, um, there are other products out there like ChatGPT that you can also use. Uh, but if you go out to their website, you can sign up. You don't have to um, provide payment information. If you do want to use um, the latest and greatest and you don't want to be limited by the number of questions that you can ask, um, uh, you you can sign up and pay. I, I think I'm on the, uh, the $20 a month plan right now, um, which is totally worth it for me. Um, but, uh, you can, uh, sign up and start playing around. And if you ask, um, there's a certain, if you're on the free account, there's a certain number of questions and it'll tell you to come back later. Um, if you pay, you have a lot more, um, that you can do. And essentially what chat GPT is, is it has consumed a massive amount of information you know, computers are computers are pretty dumb, um, but they can store a lot of information and they can access it very quickly. And so, uh, and one one thing to remember with ChatGPT, just as I have this screen up, I've started a new chat. Um, you can see I have a number of uh, chats going on, and uh, in my history here, and you can just fire up a new one. And it has, it was trained, uh, as it is telling me here when I asked it about Code Kentucky, uh, it says that I don't know about this because my most recent training data is September of 2021. So that's one thing to be aware of right away is that certain things that happened after September of 2021 um it won't know about okay and so when you ask a question basically what it is doing is it's going against this huge database of information that it has absorbed on the internet and it is giving you a, a sequence of words that match what it has found okay and it does seem to be very intelligent right um but it's really in a way it's kind of parroting back to you the things that it's learned and it um it can make mistakes it can misinterpret the data um and it can it can yeah it can be flat out wrong um, and sometimes it'll, it'll even make stuff up. They call those, uh, hallucinations. Um, and so really, you know, when, when I'm, when I'm in a session with chat GPT, a lot of times just for fun, I'll pretend like it's, you know, human and it's not right. So it, it will respond in ways that we are familiar with. Uh, in conversation to make it seem like it is, you know, alive. But uh, if you explore how this actually works, it is really just a collection of algorithms and being able to relate and and uh, find data that's related uh, and, and display that in a way that looks very intelligent. Um, so just a few things right off the bat um to, to know is that it does have a certain point in time you know this september 2021 date so newer things it's not going to know as much about they are incorporating some things into the model which is kind of the its memory um but you have to be careful if you're talking about things that are that are after that date um and uh the other thing is is that the organization that developed ChatGPT, when you're in chat mode like this, um, you want to be very careful not to submit confidential information 
if you go through and you read the privacy um, statements, they can actually use your information to um, to kind of tweak Chat GPT. So um, there was a there was a big news uh, blow up um, a few months ago where somebody from some corporation fed a bunch of information to Chat GPT and that was discovered and um, um, that that was not that was not good, right? So there are ways so if if you've if any of you've learned about um using apis or application programming interfaces you can programmatically access um the technology behind chat gpt through an api and if you do it that way the current privacy statement um says that they don't save your information okay well they, they encrypt it and they save it for 30 days for legal purposes, but they don't put it into the model. So there's not, there's, they claim there's no chance that somebody could ask a question about something that you submitted personal data, company data through the API that would appear in the output. But if you do it through chat GPT, this interface here, the chat interface, it can appear in other conversation so be very mindful of that um if you're dealing with sensitive information you want to you want to you want to avoid that in the chat interface okay um so we're just going to dive right in here and i've done a similar version of this we had um a high school student in here a few weeks ago and uh we have a room here at the office that is called the cart room it's a game room and we have people that pop in there um, over lunch or when they're taking a break in the afternoon and they like to play mario kart and this particular high school student was uh very knowledgeable about mario kart and so when i was talking to him about chat gpd i said hey why don't we see if we can create something with chat gpt around mario kart so um Let's just start and ask, and let's just say, what do you know about Mario Kart? So it's telling us, you know, it's popular, published by Nintendo, and it actually knows a bit about the um, the series uh, of games um the the different characters you know for those of you that have played i'm guessing there's a uh a, a, a percentage of you that have played mario kart but it's a racing game right and um and uh it has different courses you can pick different characters and uh different vehicles and um yeah and you can you can race and there are multiple versions of this, but you can see that ChatGPT uh, knows quite a bit about this. Even this, you know, the last one, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, um, I'm guessing that maybe came out before September of 2021, but it's possible that the model's been updated with a, a bit of more information about that. So, I guess the first thing is here that it can be very useful just for learning about uh, different things. It, it, it knows a lot about a lot of things, but as I mentioned before, uh, you want to be skeptical, right? You want to be, um, you, you want to think critically about the information that it's giving you. Like this information that it's giving me about Mario Kart, um, this is pretty safe, right? Like if it's if it's wrong about some of this, eh, okay, I might like, I might be embarrassed if I'm in an argument and I say, hey, the latest game is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and, and I'm proven wrong. Okay, well, big deal. Um, if I'm asking health advice, which I don't recommend, <laughs> um, and, and it gives me wrong information, that could be bad, right? So it's it's always really helpful to think about like the context and what is the topic that you're talking about and always 
be mindful that you could get some incorrect information. Okay. But there are some things that are generally really safe. Um, and, and, and some of those are generating code. Now, whenever something generates code for you, um, you always want to, you know, proofread that code because code runs on computers. And if you were to get some code that could cause some harm by a, a, a hallucination or a mistake, you want to be aware of that. So you are always, you should always feel like you're the one in charge, right? So if you get some generated code as a developer, you're responsible for making sure that that's safe and that it's that it's correct. Okay. Um, so let's let's say we want to um, we we love Mario Kart. We play it all the time, and we want to we want to create some code that is going to randomly pick a character and a a, a cart or a vehicle that we're going to play. And maybe it maybe even a track, right? So we just we want to get so good that we want to um, have so, uh, 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 some uh, a program that's going to generate this for us. So um, let's go and let's say uh, let's see if we have a particular version. Let's just go with this. Um, I'm going to write a Java program that will uh, generate a random uh, character cart and track for, and so this is a good example. I'm not. I'm not saying that again for Mario Kart. One of the things that ChatGPT can does is it tracks it. Each chat is a session, and to a certain extent, okay, there are limits. To a certain extent, it remembers what you've talked about already, okay. Uh, well, actually, let's not go that far because I don't want to generate too much code. So. Um, I want to Okay, so uh, I'm not sure what all programming languages you all are familiar with. Um, I've been doing Java for many, many, many years. And so um, uh, I'm using that as an example. I will show you uh, how uh, ChatGPT is actually very efficient at generating uh, multiple uh, programming languages, um, you know, based on a solution. So you know, it's it's gone ahead and it's generated um, a, a a declaration. So this is basically establishing a list of some of the characters, and it's going to print these out to the console. And so I've actually created a um, a code space over here on GitHub. And this is kind of a, if, if any of you have ever used uh, Visual Studio Code, this is a completely online version of the editor. And this is just a quick way for me to uh, execute, you know, the code here. And I've got a Hello World uh, application uh, right now. And as soon as this comes up here, I can... Uh, can run this. Oh, 
Okay, and here's my output, hello world. And then I'll come in and I'll replace it with the code that I got from ChatGPT. I'm gonna take out this class declaration here. And then I can save and I can run this. And I get a list of characters, okay? Um, so, and again, one thing about um, programming, doing programming with ChatGPT, especially if you're um, a, a student and you're learning, is um, I would really recommend that you avoid having it do work for you that where you where you don't understand what you know um what the output is right so um a lot of people uh i think are um maybe experimenting with this so if you're taking a class on java or javascript let's say and you're trying to learn the programming language and you get assignments in that class um you really want to think about how to use ChatGPT to help you learn, okay? Because if if we just have ChatGPT like solve the problem for us, we really haven't learned anything. And the best way to learn to code is to write code, okay? So, you know, you can, one approach that you can take with, if you're using ChatGPT is to, um, use it to help you learn you know so you can you can give it some code and you can say hey uh help me understand this a little bit more um we can just do that here's an example real quick um sorry troy a quick side note we do have a request to um increase the size of the text on the screen some people are finding it's a little hard to see oh okay Uh, now, is that on this screen? Do, does anybody with thumbs up want to see this uh, get bigger here? The chat GPT interface? Really, anything that is uh, going to be recorded and we're not going to be able to see it very well during the recording. Okay. Yeah, so small. let me. All of it's too small. That's okay, better. is that a little better? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Okay, let me increase this one as well. Thanks for that feedback. How's that? One, I'd say one more increment. Okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. Uh, so here, you know, we've asked, um, you know, I asked what, help me understand this code. And so it's going through and it's saying, here's what each part of this code means. And this is telling us, this is a declaration of a string that is, uh, that's going to be an array, right? Um, this is our variable name. This is our assignment operator. These are programming basics right about the language and uh you know if, if i've written some code and i'm i'm struggling to understand how to declare a a, a a a string array or a character array or something like that um i can write the code and if i'm having issues with it compiling or something like that um i can post that in and get some help um or you can even ask for a hint I think, and 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 ChatGPT will even maybe give you a hint without giving you the full answer. And so, um, it's it's really um, it could be really valuable to think about how can it help me learn, um, and and not be a replacement for getting the work done. You know, um, especially while you're while you're learning. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, so here we'll say we wanted this to to randomly generate so 
um, please update the code to randomly uh, output a character. And this is another piece. So if you're working with some code, um, particularly like this, where you're working with code that's in a single file, um, you know, a lot of times ChatGPT will just give you a little snippet. But if you ask it to regenerate the code by adding a feature, it will give you the full code again. And that makes it easy if you're doing something like a demo or you're just experimenting to where you can come through and you can just copy uh, the full, you know, bit of code again. So I can pull this in and then now I can come in and I can just kind of re completely replace this. Uh, I'm going to fix this other stuff here in a second. I'll show you how to do that. I'll get rid of this. And now if we run it, oh, now we got to do an import. Okay, so here I see the output is that the first time it generated, uh, what was it, Waluigi, and now it's Wario. So now it's added some code to randomly uh, generate using the random class in Java, and it is selecting a random number of this list of characters, and it's pulling one of those out, right? And then I can say, uh, now I want to add a list of vehicles and uh, generate a random uh, selection. Please uh, give me the full listing of the code to, that includes this and the Okay, so now it's going to um, generate lists of characters and uh, cards. Okay, and that doesn't all fit on the screen, but basically it's using essentially the same code. Now, you know, based on what we learned, we probably could have written this up ourselves because it follows a very similar pattern here. Um, and, you know, I've, I've called my my class in this case cart demo and I can I can say that please change the name of the class to cart demo. Okay, so you see there it's updated the name of the class to cart demo as I've asked. And now that makes it a lot easier for me to just copy this entire block of code and put it in the editor because the, the class name is uh, matches. So I'll wait for that to generate. Now I have my new code and I see in here that I've got these vehicles, I've got the characters, and I was able to just paste that all in, save, and run it. And now I've got a character and a vehicle. But when I was talking to this very informed 
uh, high school uh, student a few weeks ago, yeah, he let me know that characters can only uh, drive certain carts, but ChatGPT really hasn't said anything about that. So we say, I've heard uh, that characters can only drive uh, certain carts. Uh, let's just say that. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And so it's already taken the initiative um, to add a data structure now in here that lists the carts that a particular character can drive. So this is an example where it didn't start out by doing that okay it made certain assumptions about characters and carts and it just listed them kind of independently um but when i when i when i pressed it for more information by by giving the, this extra data it now is able to go into basically its its language model and give me more information ab about that and then also generate the code, uh, you know, for that. Um, and you can see here too, it'll it'll do this often. It'll it'll say things like, "You can add more characters and their carts as needed." And you know, it, sometimes it can be it can be really helpful to be persistent, especially you know if you're trying to generate some code around a data structure like this. You know, do I want to go in and type that out to get a a, a, a more comprehensive list? Eh, not really. So I can say um, three uh, is not enough. Can you generate 10 combos? So it knew enough when I just said, hey, generate 10 combos. It, it knew enough to um, to be able to translate that to that's I want 10 data combinations. And so now it's going through and it's you know giving me um, it's giving me 10. So a lot of times just remember that there are there are servers you know in the cloud that are providing this service. And the authors of ChatGPT are trying to use those resources um, uh, very efficiently. And so a lot of times when you ask for ChatGPT to generate some code, it'll give you part of a solution. And it may even say, this is a good start. You know, you can fill this in. And all you have to do is say, um, no, I want you to do more of the work and um, very often it will do that. So you kind of have to be persistent with it um, because sometimes it'll take uh, um, kind of the easy way out. Uh, so now we look at this and we have these different combinations. We have the, you know, the, the characters with the carts that they can drive. We'll copy this, come back here, paste it, and then if we run this, I've got Donkey Kong and wildlife for my carts. And you can see if I go look at my data structure in here, um, if I look up Donkey Kong, there's wildlife that is part of that, that structure. And I, could, I continue to expand this and say, um, Uh, have a randomly uh, um, generated track. 
Yep, and I even misspell. I didn't quite spell that out. It's really good at catching those um, issues. And so now it's going to go through and it's going to generate an even more complicated data structure, which this this type of learning, playing around with something that you you know well, right? Like, so if it's Mario Kart, um, you know, some other game that you know, some hobby that you have, this can be a really effective way to learn about a programming language. A lot of times, you know, um, I know in some of the classes that I took in college, the problems that I was solving were more, um, you know, academic maybe. I didn't understand the the domain maybe as well. And so playing around and generating like a little application or something like that that is related to something that you know can be very um, educational. And ChatGPT knows a lot about a lot of things. Um, you know, so I I'm I like to do woodworking, uh, for example. Um, I could generate an application that um, uh, gives me like different characteristics of different types of wood or even recommend um, use ChatGPT to re recommend different types of wood for a particular project, uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, if find something that you that you that you like, that you have an interest in and play around from that perspective. And by doing that, and getting it to do more complex things, you can start to learn good like um, uh, programming patterns. It could show you some bad programming patterns, but um, in general, it you know it's it it'll do a pretty good job, and you're almost always going to learn something, um, you know, from that. So as kind of the final, you know, feature for this piece, uh, if I come in and I, you know, uh, put this in and save this and run this. Now I get a character and a cart and a track. And so um, if I'm walking, getting ready to go to the cart room and I wanna play, I can use this to generate, you know, a list of things and and just randomly, you know, um, play that, that setup. Um, So the other thing that, you know, we do a lot of in when we're developing applications professionally is we we write tests for our code. Um, I know in a lot of, um, you know, in, in academic environments, there's a lot to learn and there's not always a lot of time spent on different types of uh, different approaches to writing tests for the code. Um, and so, you know, one of the things I could ask is um, there's a there's a testing framework called JUnit for Java. Um, and I can ask to it for it to create a test for me. And this is actually um, valuable one of the things that it starts out with is it says that it needs to refactor uh the the class so that it's testable and in java that means you you really need to have methods on a class to um to to be able to test it most of the time and so uh you know it's it's regenerated the code which again can be very valuable if whatever programming language you're using, there's there's almost always a there's going to be a test framework that you can use to test the code, and taking some code that you've written and then asking for some advice on how to appropriately test that can can lead to some really valuable discoveries. And so in this case, you know one of the things is well. You know, in order to make this code testable, I need to kind of refactor or you know reorganize the code in this class so that it's it's testable. And that alone, 
just understanding, you know, an approach to doing that and looking at how it transforms the class into something that's, that's testable can be really valuable in itself. And you can kind of see here what it's done is it's generated these methods. Um, that's what we call them in Java, um, kind of like functions in JavaScript. You know, the, um, almost all languages have this concept. And it allows us to call these, you know, independently uh, to get, you know, the, the character and the, the cart for the character and the track. And here we can see that because these are all standalone, in order to get a cart for a character, I have to actually send it the character. And I won't, I'm not going to incorporate this in and run it and everything at this point, just because I want to show, um, you know, kind of what it can do. And so it knows enough about this J unit test framework to generate a test class that comes in and generates. Um, it, it came up with three different test cases for this class, right? So um, if I if I say I want to generate a random character, it should give me a result back. That's what this one is testing for. If I have the character of Mario and I pass in that character, that I should also get a cart back, right? Because I, I know that that's in my database of characters and I should get a track back. And so this is just, again, the very beginnings of writing proper tests. But this, if you haven't written tests before, gives you a really great head start on kind of understanding it. And again, you can come back and you can ask ChatGPT to explain um, some of this code to you and it'll do a pretty good job. It may even point you to some documentation that's out there uh, on the web to help you learn it a little bit better. Um, you know, there's always the option if you're using, you know, uh, an IDE like VS Code, you know, you can come in and you can actually debug, you know, the code and take a look at things. So here, you know, I'm, uh, I'm looking at these, uh, these different variables here. And if I, if I step over this, I can start to see this data structure is, you know, being populated. Um, and so learning a debugger is a is an extremely valuable tool uh, if you're going to develop professionally. And, uh, you know, so being able to step through your code in a in a development environment can be super valuable. Um, so. Uh, we'll get to some questions here. I want to make sure we leave plenty of time for that. But just to kind of recap here, you know, we 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 picked something we were interested in. We we had ChatGPT kind of teach us about that and 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 help us understand what it knows about a topic. So in this case, Mario Kart. And then we just started asking questions. We started asking for it to generate code um, to help us. Uh, maybe understand code to generate some tests. And another really great feature is um, translation. So give us this in Python. And so now uh, we can see the same code in Python, and we could do this in C or C++ or uh, Lisp. It, ChatGPT knows the syntax for a lot of these. And I mean, you could spend hours, uh, you know, seeing what different code looks like in, in, uh, in these different languages to kind of compare and contrast like, you know, how how well it handles different data structures you know and things like that and so it can be extremely valuable to get some perspective on what things look like in in different languages um and yeah we could just we could continue to do this um you know if you have 
gotten to the point where you're learning about how to build a web application, um, you can you can take the step of taking some code that you're working with and translating that into uh, web application code. Um, uh, we don't really have time to do that here, but um, you know, with with any programming language that is that is used in the web, you usually have some sort of web framework. Um, with with Java, for example, you've got Java EE or or Spring, um, and Python has theirs. JavaScript has Node.js and Express and all these others. If you want to explore some of those, you can you can start asking ChatGPT like, how do I turn this into a web application? What technologies are available? Uh, it can be super valuable just to kind of go on a little bit of a journey and learn what's out there and and what is is possible. Um, I think that's that's um, primarily. Oh, I forgot one thing. So. You know, this we use this interface to as this is a chat mode. And when you start a chat mode with ChatGPT, it really doesn't have any context. You have to give it that context or that background on what you're trying to do, right? So when I started asking about Mario Kart, it started going, you know, essentially like, oh, I see. We've we have started a conversation around Mario Kart and it is able to build on that. Now, there are certain tools out there, and I realize this might be a little small. This is actually, um, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Okay, here we go. Um, I realize this might be a little small. It's not, it's not super important to see all the details here. Um, but there are tools out there. So this one's called um, uh, Cursor, and there's uh, GitHub Copilot. What they've done is they've actually embedded uh, ChatGPT um, into the the IDE, and basically what it does is it goes through and it. It, the context that it's building is it goes in and it reads all of your code, okay? And so it can give you advice on lots of different things um, related to the code that you're working in. So if you're working on a project, you can use one of these tools and you can ask it very specific um, questions. Um, so, so, for example, you know, you can see over here a little bit, it might be a little small, but I gave it an error, an error that I got. Um, this arrays cannot be resolved. And it basically came back and said, hey, you need to put an import in for arrays. Otherwise, Java doesn't know about it. And so I just wanted to mention that briefly it, because GitHub Copilot, um, things like, like um, Cursor here, they are um, optimized and incorporated into the development environments and they provide a much better, um, they can provide a better experience than just using the chat. So that's really, uh, I know that was a pretty quick tour. Hopefully you've got some, um, uh, you have some ideas, some things that you might wanna try. You have an idea of some of the capabilities in, in terms of, um, helping you learn. Let's open it up for questions. What kind of questions do you have? Yeah, feel free to share your questions in the chat or you can unmute and ask. I have a question on What's the best um, chat to use? I use Open AI right now. Um, I don't use, I don't pay for it, so I just use the free. If 
if I'm using chat three, um, am I still okay if I can't upgrade the chat four? Yeah, you know, I'm I I I don't have um, a lot of information on that, um, but Chat three is still uh, very good. Chat GPT four, for example, there's there's different versions. Um, uh, there, I think there's a three five turbo and there's a four. Um, th th one of the differences is that some of the the more recent ones they can retain more memory about your conversation so with three for example if you have a really long conversation eventually it's going to start forgetting things that that occurred earlier in the conversation um because like i said earlier like computers are kind of dumb sometimes and so what what has to happen is either the com the all of the conversation that you're that you've had so far or a summary of that gets stored in memory and the different gpt products can store different amounts of memory and so at some point they start to forget um so if if you're planning on having much more detailed and longer conversations then you might want to consider upgrade upgrading but I would say, unless you unless you kind of hit a wall or something that's that's not working for you, um, I would say you can probably just stick with the with the free things. And I'm sure there's some pretty decent summaries that talk about um, you know what the different versions, uh, what other uh, capabilities you know they have. That might be a good thing to research, or you can even ask ChatGPT uh, if you want to interact with with four. Um, it probably can give you some notes there, but yeah, great question. But I would say start with the free stuff, see if you hit limits or if you're if you're not satisfied, and then maybe explore from there. Okay, yeah, the open AI seems like um, it's been collecting since I started all the conversations. The only thing it will do occasionally is if you go too long, it'll ask you for a different subject. I've had that happen to a couple times, and it's like, yeah. It, 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 it politely cuts you off. Yeah. <laughs> but, but as far as my need, it's to me, it's like having a, a tutor right next to you with 140 IQ who can answer questions with a matter of seconds and doesn't get aggravated if you ask the same question three or four times to get, get to actually understand it. So to me, it seems like it's working perfectly fine because I'm able to, to put code in there and say, explain to me step by step. And then I'll go steps by step. And I'll say, well, what does this yeah. one mean? And so I finally figured out how to do that after probably spending about four or five hours using it as a, as a tutoring um, for tutoring help. And I'm at a point now where I feel like I'm able to successfully use it to, to be able to get answers and, and to speed the process of learning. So it's kind of changed the way I've learned. I'm older. So it's like, Back in the day, you remember calling on the phone for homework? Where they yeah. Had homework hotline. So that's how, I, that's yeah. how old I am. I remember having to call a few times like, hey, I have this problem. So this is to me is like, I couldn't imagine if a 10 year old learns this. I mean, it's, I wish we had this when I was a teenager. It would be a lot more useful. Yeah. Well, and one recommendation is, is for each new topic, start a new chat because what you don't want to do is you don't want to talk about lots of different things in a single chat because each one of those is a session and each one of those sessions has a limit. So you can see like I've got lots of different sessions here. And so yeah. anytime, anytime I want to start talking about something, I'll fire up a new session and okay. then I'll, I'll actually open up with a message, something like that says, here's what I want to talk about here's what I want to accomplish and that sort of thing. And that sort of sets the stage for the conversation and you get a lot more out of it that way. Okay. And you also said that the more you search, the more it kind of, um, kind of figures out, it, it kind of, the more questions you ask, it kind of uh, knows how to answer your question. I'm trying to ask the question, if that makes sense. Um, it, it starts to become more customized to, to learning how you're asking questions to it, it kind of learns how your questioning is, I, if, if, per se. If it, uh, that might be yeah. hard to do like that. So, yep. Yeah. So if you if you go from talking about cart to talking about monkeys, uh, you know, it's it's going to start 
kind of getting a little it won't it won't get confused but um you're just you're taking up memory on two different topics and so it's going to be a little bit more limited gotcha all right thank you sure any other questions You know, I, I still have an open question for you. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I understand a part you asked two different questions because I've actually done that and actually had to say to open AI, no, I'm not talking about what we just talked about. I'm talking about this. You know, say, oh, okay, I know. Uh, what I meant was um, when you start asking questions, um, does it customize itself to start to get familiar with how you're asking questions? So if I was to ask different styles of questions and would, would evolve to be able to answer questions slightly more to adapting the way that I would ask questions, if, if it were we there yet where it's like, it, it kind of knows like it, once you ask a question 40 times on 10 different subjects, it kind of has an idea of like, it go ahead and answer certain questions before you asked it because in the previous past, you've done ask that question after another question is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, there might be within a particular session, there might be a little of that, but each session is independent. So it doesn't learn things across mm -hmm. sessions um, about you as far as that goes really, um, you know, there's the whole if you want to research a little bit more, there's this whole topic called prompt engineering, and that is how to ask questions most effectively to okay. chat GPT. So if you do a little bit of research on that, like there is it's it's definitely an art in how you ask questions. And I think the perspective that is is that you probably want to have, at least right now, is uh, to learn how to phrase questions more effectively because um, it's just it's just not that smart yet to be able to do some of that. And the more the more that you um, ask questions that it is trained to understand, the better results you're going to get. Okay, yeah, I've watched videos like that where it shows you how to precisely ask the question to get a better response back. Um, and I found that to be helpful on asking questions where I was, I, I'm able to shorten my question to get more precise answer as opposed to um, not putting in the question correctly. Um, right. So I, I figured that part out. Um, and it seems like that's improved, made it a lot easier because you're, you're not trying to figure out how am I going to ask this question? You almost become a question artist. <laughs> you know, it, that's to, exactly that. You've just described prompt engineering. It's question artist. Yeah, yeah that's it, exactly what it is. I almost feel like open oh, nah, AI isn't a calculator, it's a word calculator, if that makes sense. So I, I kind of look at it as a word calculator, um, if that makes sense to you as opposed to just a calculator. Sure, yeah. We got I another question? Really. I will say really quick, we are at time, but Julie, if you have a question, go ahead and ask it if you're okay with hanging around a minute, Troy. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'll let, I'll let y'all finish. Thank you so much. Sure. You're fine, James. Hi. Um, I was just curious. You mentioned earlier that uh, Chat GPT has the ability to actually make up um, an answer, essentially basically lying to you. Um, is it adaptive enough to auto correct itself? Like kind of learn information and then get back onto a proper track for accurate information or does it continue along in the same vein? No, it, it can. Um, and I was, I was actually looking for an example in my history, but I'll just, I'll just talk about it real quick. So, um, Basically, what it does is it it follows the most well-known paths of information. Um, and so, for example, uh, somebody here at at uh, at that work was they were trying to change their brakes out. And, you know, if if you're 
basically the way that brake pads work is there are there's a piston in your um on your brakes usually um and it pushes the pads against uh, a rotor and when you're ch when you're changing out your brake pads okay you take the wheel off and you take these pads off and this piston is usually sticking out and on most cars you use a clamp and you push that piston in so that you can put the new pads on and and somebody here found out the hard way that the piston doesn't push in it screws in and so i thought hey this is a great thing to ask chat gpt about and i said hey for this model and make of car how do i retract the piston on this in this in this brake unit and it came back and said you put a clamp on it and you push it back and i said now wait a minute um i i thought that for this particular year you're supposed to turn the piston to retract it and it immediately came back and said oh i'm sorry you are correct for this particular make and model you do have to turn it in and so that's a perfect example of you know probably the most common procedure for a honda let's say would be to push the piston in but for that particular year and make make it was different and so chat gpt had tons of information on hondas that that was the answer and it went down that path okay so that's how you can kind of think of it if you um if if you find something that you know is is incorrect just one of the ways to start with that is to say that's actually not correct i believe that there's another solution or that there's a different answer it will go down a different path and it may provide you with more valuable info and it'll do that when you're writing code as well i've had it generate code that doesn't compile uh or that uses um uh, references to libraries incorrectly or something like that and if a lot of times if you just tell it that it's wrong by posting an error or something in there it'll correct itself so okay. if, if you bring up something that causes it to correct itself it can stay on that path but it's not always guaranteed okay so it goes back to more of trying to be uh, the prompt engineering in terms of finding a better question to ask it Exactly. And then it'll auto, it'll recorrect. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Great question. Okay. Um, we are a little bit over time. Um, Troy, are you still good to answer one last question or do you need to head out? No, I'm fine. I saw that somebody put something in chat there. Um, yeah, sure did. Um, so Sky was asking, uh, is there any difference between chat GPT uh, and Google's Bard? Um, yeah, I mean, they're just different implementations of similar, you know, technologies. Um, there are, um, there are lots of examples. If you go out and you search, there's like, you can find Python code that will take one question and it'll send it to these different platforms and see what kind of answer that you get. Um, I'm not at the level where I could tell you um the real advantages and disadvantages of each but bard is kind of google's implementation right it's 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 their proprietary code that that is attempting to do the same thing and it's going to be better at some things you know than others and there's probably some good information out there on that um you know that that'd be a great thing to research is uh it'd be to go out there i'm sure people have written some really good articles on different kind of use cases or problems that may work well with one versus the other there's there's different pricing that goes with those uh that sort of thing and you know this stuff is evolving so rapidly that even if you go find a really good article in another month it may not be true anymore because they're constantly trying to update these and they're they're in competition right so they're trying to create these tools and get more market share and and so that's a good thing for us like as developers is to have these people comp competing with these tools because it's it's 
driving them to make them make them better and we benefit from that and that keeps the cost down as well because people are competing on on, on cost Troy, okay, could I ask so... Sorry. Sorry, David. <laughs> um, You're totally good. No sweat. I, I, I keep hearing a lot of um, things about um, jobs requiring people to learn AI. Um, I, and I'm at the point now that I, I kind of believe that maybe right now AI is not going to replace human jobs yet but humans that know how to use AI will replace humans who don't know how to use AI. In your opinion, how do you feel about that statement? Um, so far, that's what I've gathered from everything I've learned so far. And I'm, I'm stuck with that just one comment that I believe that to me, that seems like the most important thing, but I'm, I'm new at this. So. Yes, you, I, I, I believe that you are spot on. Like it's the, you know that people are experimenting with these AI developers um, that you know can take some requirements and write some code and contribute it to a code base. Those are very rudimentary. Um, there's there's way too much going on in a real production application, and um, it's we're a ways away from that being effective. But I I my thought is is that the the most effective people right now who absolutely should be considering this technology are the people that um are experienced because you know with the experience that i have like i i i have a really good idea of what to ask for like if i'm building a production application there's a there's a whole list of things that i can help that i can ask ChatGPT to generate for me to that that makes sense for a real production application, right? And so in in general though, I, I do think that um, that developers, um, uh, support engineers, like there's a whole class of, of um, occupations that if we're not looking for ways to supplement our work with this technology, um, we'll, we'll fall behind. And and honestly, right, like from the perspective, like I I don't I don't like writing a lot of like boilerplate code or a lot of you know like sitting down and hacking out like all the Mario Kart characters. That's no fun. Um, so finding ways for technology like this to help us do the things that um, don't require a lot of um, brain work or design can be super helpful it can save us a lot of time it can help us debug issues um it really is an accelerator but it's in my in my view i, I feel pretty strongly that it's just it's not a replacement and it won't be for a while because we're solving complex problems and it's 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 more than what these systems can currently handle they can help, but not replace. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think uh, we'll probably need to go ahead and end it there just to be um, respectful of everybody's time. We will have a recording on, um, in a day or two, we'll post it in uh, the announcements channel. Um, and uh, thanks a lot for you for your time we really really appreciate it it was a great demo absolutely i really appreciate the opportunity to do it and uh, hopefully you walk away with um uh knowing something that you didn't before you got here and i just i hope it's helpful for you and uh uh just really appreciate it